The Visconti Carbon Skeleton that I'm reviewing today was sent to me by Bryant Greer of Chatterley Luxuries. It's a very large, gorgeous, and expensive fountain pen that comes with a matching traveling ink pot. The Carbon Skeleton features a clear cap and barrel with a carbon fiber overlay. And this is real carbon fiber, not that fake plastic printed stuff made to look like carbon fiber. The trim is sterling silver and provides a nice contrast to that carbon fiber. Removing the cap reveals a comfortably contoured section that wasn't as slick as I thought it would be. Since this pen uses the double reservoir power filler, the inclusion of an ink window in this section is also a useful touch. This pen comes with Visconti's 23 karat Palladium Dream Touch nib and is available in extra fine through double broad and 1.3 stub sizes. The feed is plastic and does a good job controlling flow. I've always enjoyed Visconti's nib imprint design and especially like the crescent moon shaped breather hole. The clip is the same style as that used on the original skeleton. It looks and works fantastically well. Directly beneath the clip is engraved skeleton and around the back directly opposite is engraved Visconti. Tension is a little light but it keeps the pen in place. The clip's shape allows for it to easily slide over a thick seam into a pocket. Perhaps more appropriate would be the inside pocket of a suit, but you get the idea. One of my favorite details on this pen's massive cap is the ginormous Visconti logo on top. At the other end of the pen is the serial number. It's a little difficult to see, but this one is number 12 of 22. The skeleton is a large pen, but let's see how it stacks up to a few others. From left to right is the Conway Stewart Marlboro. Omas Millard, Pelican M805, Pelican M1000, Visconti Homo Sapiens, Mont Blanc 149, Visconti Skeleton, the Parker Duofold Centennial, and the Lamy 2000. Uncapped, you can see how the small number 6 nib in the skeleton looks in relation to its massive barrel. The pin is larger than the M1000, and I really think it deserves a larger nib. This pin is pretty large and heavy. It fills the hand nicely and is actually quite comfortable to use, but does get a little fatiguing after a while. If you're looking to get more than the usual amount of attention, you can always post the cap. It sits really far back on the pen and helps you really stand out. I like to post a lot of my pens, but this one just gets too awkward, even for short notes or signatures. But at least Visconti gives you the option. The only problem with posting the cap is that it attaches to the filling knob, and if you twist the cap to remove it, you can unscrew the knob. Since this pen uses a power filler, it won't have the same messy effect as twisting a pistons knob, but still, you should be aware of this detail. The double reservoir power filler is simple and easy to use. With the filling knob closed, there's essentially two separate ink reservoirs in the pen. Unscrewing the filling knob opens the seal and allows ink to flow from the reservoir in the barrel to the one in the section. Filling the pen is as easy as pulling the filling knob back and pushing it forward. For the writing sample, I'll be using Visconti Turquoise. It's one of my favorite turquoise inks, and since I'm using a Visconti pen, I might as well use a Visconti ink, right? From a completely empty pen, the first fill only results in about a 40% fill. But try it again, and you can see that I get about 70% this time. If that's still not enough for you, and you just absolutely have to have as close to 100% as possible, that's easy to do. Just invert the pin, pull the plunger all the way back, then push all the air out of the pin. Now, holding the pin in this position, put it back in the ink and complete the stroke. From a completely empty pin, three strokes is all it takes for a 100% fill. The Palladium Dream Touch nib is known for its softness. While not intended to be a flex nib per se, applying a little pressure will spread the tines and add some line variation to your writing. This particular pen has a broad nib with a fairly prominent stubbish quality to it. Combine that and the soft nib and you've got a heck of a writing experience, assuming the pen actually does write. This nib is incredibly smooth, one of the smoothest I've ever used in fact, but I think it was taken a little too far because this pen was plagued with hard starting issues. You've seen several instances of that already and you're about to see some more. I'm using a brand new pad of Rodier here so I really don't think it can be blamed on the paper. Here I'm trying to show off the line variation that can be created but as you can see I'm experiencing nothing but frustration. This kind of performance is really acceptable in any pen, let alone one that cost $1400. 
The only comforting thing about this situation is that I know Bryant wouldn't hesitate to resolve this issue. When you buy a pen from him, you get the best customer service found anywhere. I did find that performance improved once I started writing in cursive. I really don't know why that would change things, but if you watch the rest of this sample, you'll see far fewer issues than you have in the last minute or two. I've sped up the rest of the cursive samples, but if you'd like to skip them, jump to 6.15 for my conclusion. So that's the Visconti Carbon Skeleton. It's a big, heavy, finely constructed writing instrument made from carbon fiber and sterling silver. It cost $1,400 and I doubt you'll run into another person that has one, considering there's only 22 in the world. It's a gorgeous piece, but unfortunately the nib performance just wasn't there. Having said that, I really don't hold it against Visconti all that much, and here's why. Even if this pen didn't have any issues, I'd have the nib tuned. This is something I advocate with every pen, whether it works out of the box or not, and whether it costs $15 or $1,500, but especially so the more you spend on a pen. If you like its design and the way it feels in the hand, but the nib just isn't perfect, have it tuned. I promise it'll become your favorite pen. Out of the box, no pen is going to be your idea of perfect, and when you're spending this much on a pen, that's exactly what you deserve, perfection. So that's all for now. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, please take a moment to leave a comment and let me know what you thought about this pen and also the video. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future and if you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. See you next time. Indulge in the